bunting and two to trade. Things fans really know a lot about. Oh, man, they had to hit and run in that situation. It wouldn't have been a double play. Hi, everybody. I'm Johnny Bench. Welcome to the Roll Age Great American Baseball Quiz. Over the next half hour, we'll put you in seats all over the ballpark and see what you know about the game from all different angles. Relief pitching, umpiring, managing. We'll even test your memory of players' nicknames. Now, I'll ask you questions on each topic, and you match your answers against mine. At the end of the show, we'll add up your score and see how much of a baseball expert you really are. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable, because when we come back, we're moving to the bullpen. Uh, how can you get thrown out at third base, make the third out? That, that Everybody knows that since Little League. I mean, you probably even knew that. The Great American Baseball Quiz. Now, don't forget the extra cheese. Yeah, address Oakland Coliseum Visitors Bullpen. Uh, could you bring that around back? Just one of many extracurricular activities that relief pitchers are known to pursue. In the 60s, Orioles reliever Mo Drabowski worked as a stockbroker during the offseason. And when things weren't busy, Mo used the bullpen phone to get the latest stock prices. In this part of our quiz, we're going to see how much you know about relief pitching. And the stuff that happens on the mound, that is. And speaking of Drabowski, in the 66 World Series against the Dodgers, he set a record by doing what? That's for extra credit at the end of the show. Right now, how do you spell relief? Remember, for each correct answer, give yourself one point. Let's begin with one of the busiest bullpen aces of the 70s. Reliever Mike Marshall was in constant demand. One year with the Twins, he pitched in 90 games to set an American League record. But do you know which reliever holds the major league mark for appearances in a season? If you said Mike Marshall also owns the major league record for relief appearances in a season, give yourself a point. In 1974 with the Dodgers, he appeared in 106 games. Now this, who is the all-time save leader? Is it Bruce Suter, Raleigh Fingers, Jeff Reardon, or Albert Sparky Lyle? No reliever spelled relief with more saves than Raleigh Fingers. Pitching for three different teams in 17 years, Fingers chalked up a record 341 saves. If you said Fingers is the all-time save leader, give yourself a point. Detroit's John Hiller was more winner than savior in 1974 when he won 17 games in relief. Only one other reliever has ever had more victories. Can you name that reliever? If you said the single season record for relief victories belongs to Elroy Face, give yourself a point. In 1959 with the Pirates, he sweetened his 10 saves with a record 18 wins. Now to the single season save leader. Who is it? Dan Quisenberry, Mark Davis, Dennis Eckersley, or Dave Rigetti? If you said Dave Rigetti holds the record for most saves in a season, give yourself a point. In 1986, his third year out of the bullpen, he topped Dan Quisenberry's all-time record when he collected 46 saves. In 1981, Raleigh Fingers won the Cy Young Award and the MVP. True or false, he's the only American League reliever to win an MVP. False. Willie Hernandez saved 32 games for the 1984 Tigers and won the MVP, becoming the only other American League reliever to win the award. Now this. Who holds the all-time record for most appearances in relief? Hoyt Wilhelm? Kit Tocolvi? Goose Gossage? Or Raleigh Fingers? Fingers? 
Kit Tocolvi was a workhorse out of the bullpen. With his patented sidearm delivery, Tocolvi pitched until he was 42 and retired with the all-time record for relief appearances, 1,050. Boyd Wilhelm was a rookie in 1952 when he led the National League in ERA. True or false, he's the only reliever to win an ERA title. If you said true, give yourself a point. By the way, Wilhelm also won an ERA title as a starter with the Orioles. Now to hot starts out of the bullpen. Who owns the rookie save record? Dan Plesak, Todd Worrell, John Franco, or Tom Hankey? If you said Todd Worrell owns the rookie save record, give yourself a point. In 1986, his first full season as a Cardinal, Worrell collected 36 saves. The 1973 Oakland A's won the World Series with an outstanding pitching staff capped by the redoubtable Raleigh Fingers. But do you know the lesser known middle reliever who made history by pitching in all seven games of that series? Darrell Knowles may have pitched in the shadow of Raleigh Fingers, but in the 73 World Series, he was ever present. And in helping to beat the Mets, Knowles became the only reliever to pitch in all seven series games. That's all for this part of the show, but there's still lots of baseball coming up, so stick around for more of the Roll Aid's Great American Baseball Quiz. Hey, Mo, did they really put you on margin? No. Down an eighth, huh? Second guessing the manager is one of the great things about being a baseball fan. One time St. Louis Browns owner Bill Vec gave cards something like these to Browns fans and let them vote on the strategy. Whatever they decided, the team had to follow. And how do you like this? The Browns won that game. Well, Bill Vec was one owner who never went by the book, and neither do some managers. In this part of our quiz, you'll be the manager. We'll show you some real game situations and let you match your decision with the one actually used by the manager. Remember, that famous unwritten book isn't always right. You have to consider the variables and use your own intuition. Should he have bunted? Here we go. The Yankees have the potential winning run on second. Game tied last of the 11th. Red Sox right-hander Bob Stanley is facing the left-handed Deion Sanders. First base is open. There are two outs, and right-hander Steve Sachs is on deck. Do you remember what manager Joe Morgan did? Give yourself a point if you said Morgan ordered a walk to Sanders. That set up a righty-righty matchup, which didn't bother Steve Sachs much. And a base hit into center field, and that's the ball game. Yankees win it 8 to 7 and 11. In this case, so much for playing the percentages. Whitey Herzog's Cardinals are in a jam. The Atlanta Braves have tied up the game in the eighth and now have the bases loaded and are threatening to take the lead. What did Whitey do with Deion James up? Bring the infield in for a force at home or play back for a double play? If you said that Whitey Herzog played the infield back and went for two, give yourself a point. It just so happens the strategy was made to order. Deion James may be fast, but he wasn't fast enough to beat out this double playgrounder, which ended the inning with the game still tied and got the Cardinals out of a bases loaded jam. Roger Craig's Giants are leading the Reds four to three in the top of the ninth. Left-hander Craig Lefferts has a runner on first. The Reds send up right-handed hitting Eric Davis to pinch hit. Craig has veteran right-hander Goose Gossage in the bullpen. Did he bring in Goose or stick with Lefferts? If 
Houston Craig elected to bring in the right-hander Gossage to face the right-handed hitting Davis. Give yourself a point. Now let's see what happened. So Goose Gossage on for Roger Craig's ball club. Paul O'Neill with an RBI single stands at first base. The Giants lead, and Eric Davis, a drive to left field, and there it goes! Home run! One swing of the bat off the bench of number 44, and the Reds lead by one. Again, playing the percentages was a flop. Davis's homer sealed the Giants' fate as they lost five to four. Don Zimmer's Chicago Cubs are trying to stop a Houston rally in the bottom of the ninth. The Astros have just tied up the game. With runners on first and second, right-handed pinch hitter Alex Trevino is brought in to face left-hander Steve Wilson. But Zimmer wants a righty-righty matchup and counters with right-hander Jeff Pico. In response to that move, Art Howell the left-handed pinch hitter, Harry Spillman. So far, both managers are playing the percentages. Remember, runners on first and second, last of the ninth, scores tied and there are two outs. Do you remember what unorthodox move Don Zimmer made? If you said Don Zimmer threw the book out the window and called for an intentional walk to Spillman, give yourself a point. That loaded the bases and moved the winning run to third and meant that the Astros could score without a hit. Rafael Ramirez was up next, a righty batter against a righty pitcher. But that advantage did not help the Cubs. Pico walked Ramirez and the Astros got a gift win. Well, sometimes a stroke of genius can backfire. These seats may be a little far away, but that fact has never kept fans from letting the umpire know their true feelings. Well, now it's your time to be the ump. Once again, we'll show you actual game situations and see how well you know the rule book. Watch the play, then decide. If your call matches the umps, give yourself a point. The Phillies have a runner on first. Padres catcher Benito Santiago attempts to pick him off. But Santiago's throw hits Tommy Hur's bat. The runner sees the ball roll foul and goes to second. Is he allowed to stay there? In the umpire's judgment, this is a case of batter interference. The ball is dead and no advance can be made on the play. If you said the runner must return to first base, give yourself a point. Atley Hamaker throws a wild pitch and at the same time commits a ball. Pedro Guerrero, coming from second, heads home, sees he can't make it and gets nailed at third. Is he out? Since Hamaker balked and threw wild, Guerrero is entitled to one base. After that, he advances at his own risk. If you said Guerrero's out, call sticks. Give yourself a point. Now this. A batted ball gets past a diving Chris Sabo and hits the runner, Ryan Sandberg. Is Sandberg out for running into a batted ball, or is he safe? Don Zimmer made the right point. Since the batted ball went past Sabo and then touched Sandberg, and because no other fielder could make the play, there is no interference. If you said Sandberg is safe, give yourself a point. Way to go, Zim. Cal Ripken sends more than just the ball over the wall. Ripken's long drive is caught by Brad Commons. But in the process, he takes a leap over the fence. Out or home run? I'll give this to my pals at the mic. He drives it to deep left center field. Back goes Kovic to the warning track. Leaps and he has it. He falls over the fence. Kovic fell over the fence as he made the catch. It's got to be a homer. It's a home run. He made the catch, but since he left the ballpark, it's a home run. 
You've got to stay in the park. You can climb the fence, but you've got to stay in the park. If you go over the fence, it's a home run. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. Now this. With a runner on first, it looks as though Brett Saberhagen will get out of the inning with a double play. But on his way to second, Greg Gagne runs into the ball. How do you rule? Folks, this is a judgment call. And since Gagne was judged to have interfered with the batted ball in order to break up the double play, he's out. And so is the batter. If you said so, give yourself a point. Cardinal speedster Vince Coleman comes up with a novel way to avoid getting picked off. Watch closely. When the throw comes in, he simply slaps the ball away. That's one way to get a hit, but is it legal? Folks, there's not much doubt about this one. Let me put it this way. Nice try, Vince. But interfering with the fielder is a definite no-no. How do you score that? You score it with an S. <laughs> an S? You're stupid. <laughs> oh. That wasn't too tough, was it? Stay tuned. We've got more of the Roll Aid's Great American Baseball Quiz right after this. And players, managers, even fans. Right here in the bleachers, if you're a regular, you're a bleacher bum. I didn't have a nickname when I was playing. Maybe by the late 60s, they were pretty much a thing of the past. At least names like Death, the Flying Things, Ferguson? <laughs> In this part of the Roll Age Great American Baseball Quiz, we'll see how much you know about ballplayers' nicknames. Now, maybe there's some truth to what James Lamar Rhodes once said. You have to have a nickname to be remembered. Well, what was his? I'll tell you after we finish these. Enos Slaughter was a North Carolina tobacco farmer and one of baseball's preeminent hustlers. He hit 300 or better 10 times and landed in the Hall of Fame with an even 300 average. What was Slaughter's nickname? Can't believe you won't know this one. Country, Corn Pone, Haystacks, or Mad Dash? Well, he was known for his Mad Dash, but that's not it. Neither is Corn Pone or Haystacks. He was Enos Country Slaughter. Henry Lewis Gehrig may have been a humble man, but he was such a legendary baseball figure, one nickname was not enough to do him justice. Do you know which of these was not a nickname for Gehrig? Larrup and Lou, Durable Dutch, Iron Horse, or Old Biscuit Pants. Give yourself a point if you picked all of these nicknames, even Old Biscuit Pants. Left-handed pitchers have always been considered a little odd, and Bill Lee is no exception. He spoke his mind, and his mind was full of the unusual. Some wondered what planet he came from. What would Bill Lee's nickname? Starman? Spaceman? Rocket Man or Repo Man? Well, he wasn't Repo Man, nor was he Starman. Rocket Man's close, but if you said Spaceman, give yourself a point. Jimmy Wynn was only five foot nine, but he carried a big stick, and in 1974, his 32 homers and 108 RBIs helped bring the Dodgers a pennant. What was Wynn's nickname? Toy Soldier, Toy Boat, Toy Cannon, or Toy Poodle? No one was named Toy Poodle, and he wasn't Toy Boat. With his explosive bat, Wynn was the Toy Cannon. My old skipper George Lee Anderson brought both of his nicknames to Detroit when he took over the Tigers in 1979. One of the nicknames we all know is Sparky. But do you know what the other one is? Captain Hook, Captain Bly, Captain Kirk, or Captain Crunch? Captain Bly's not it, and neither is Captain Crunch. Captain Kirk is the wrong planet. The answer is Captain Hook. Dwight Gooden got his nickname soon after he came up to the Mets in 1984 and set a Major League rookie record by striking out 276 batters. What is Gooden's nickname? Is it Special K, Mr. K, Dr. K, or Murray the K? Well, Mr. K and Special K aren't it, and Murray the K makes no sense. 
The answer is Dr. K. Pee Wee Reese, the great shortstop of the Brooklyn Dodgers, was a champion marble shooter as a kid and got his nickname from the Pee Wee kind of marble. But the question is, do you know what Pee Wee's real name is? Teddy, Harold, Mason, or Della? Teddy's not it. Delta certainly's not it. Mason is a Pee Wee, but not this Pee Wee. The answer is Harold. One of baseball's most colorful teams was the 1934 St. Louis Cardinals. Not only did the team itself have a nickname, the Gas House Gang, but also every player had one. Your question, who was the Fordham Flash? Frankie Frisch, Joe Medwick, Johnny Martin, or Jay Dean? Jay Dean was dizzy, John Martin was pepper, Joe Medwick was ducky, and Frankie Frisch was the Fordham Flash. Whitey Ford came up to the Yankees in 1950, and for most of the next 15 years was the star pitcher on a team that won 11 pennants and operated with cool efficiency. Hence his nickname. What was it? Leader of the pack? Chairman of the board? Speaker of the house? Or soup of the day? I ordered the soup of the day, and it wasn't Whitey Ford. The answer, the chairman of the board. Luke Appling was a rare commodity, a shortstop who could hit. One year he hit 388 and became the first White Sox player ever to win a batting crown. What was Appling's nickname? Old Aches and Pains? Old Faithful? Old Man River? Or Old Yeller? These are all pretty good guesses, but with Appling's knack for complaining, he was called Old Aches and Pains. Remember that name earlier, James Lamar Rhodes? Well, his nickname was Dusty. That's right, Dusty Rhodes. That's it for this part of the show. Add up your score, and we'll be right back with more of the Roll Age Great American Baseball Quiz. End of the game and the end of the show. Remember that extra credit question I gave you earlier in the show? Well, if you said Mo Drabowski struck out a record 11 batters in relief in the opening game of the 1966 World Series, add on an extra point. Now it's time to total up your scores. If you got between 8 and 15 points, you are the meal ticket of baseball trivia buffs, Carl Hubble. With your unhittable screwball, you struck out five of the game's greatest all-stars in a row and pitched your team to three pennants. If you scored between 15 and 20, you've earned the name Roger for Rogers Hornsby, the man with the picture-perfect swing who had over 400 three times. And if you scored more than 20 points, well, you're the Sultan of Swat, the Georgia Peach, the Iron Horse, and the Splendid Splinter all rolled into one. Well, folks, that's all for this show. See you the next time on the Roll Age Great American Baseball Quiz. Me, I'm the Zinger from Binger, Johnny Bench. Time to go home. The Great American Baseball Quiz.